Um, okay, so Liz asks if we have any comments or opinions on Quiet Please Murder. She calls it a very unique B noir. I agree. Liz. I agree. <laughs> uh, Quiet Please Murder is fantastic. Uh, I I believe it's from 1942. It's a Fox film um, starring George Sanders and Gail Patrick is in it. Can do you want to give a little thumbnail of what this uh, of what the movie is kind of about, and then and then we'll discuss what makes it in my mind, particularly interesting. Yeah, well, it is about, um, so I guess, yeah, it's about a, basically a murderer in a library who's like hiding out in the library. It's kind of hard to explain. Maybe you can do a better job. Well, it, it, well, that most of the movie is that, what you just <laughs> described. But, but uh, George Sanders plays an art forger and he's he works with this whole ring of people who create forgeries and sell them to unsuspecting people. Um, but the and, and then in the end, he has to go into the library because I I'm, I honestly can't remember how it worked in the plot, but he has to get into the library and steal this piece, uh, this rare piece i you know there was some kind of mix up or something but what makes it so fascinating is that it's set in 1942 in los angeles and there is a blackout because of the war and so the library goes completely dark with all these people in it who are trapped in the library because there's a murder and the murderer is still loose in the library and it's yes it is so incredibly fun and uh it's just goofy but there's also a really weird uh, undercurrent of sexual perversion in this film that George Sanders plays so easily yeah. on, on screen. Gail Patrick is kind of the surprise as his foil. Yeah. And it's, it's clear that they're into some really weird, kinky stuff. And I, I seem to recall particularly a scene where... Uh, well, I shouldn't spoil it. Maybe I shouldn't spoil it, but um, they just find some really clever ways to to get stuff past the production code that are so subtle that a modern audience just cracks up laughing like, oh my God, I can't believe they're going there. But I think in 1942, not many people, it, none of that stuff registered on, on an audience in 1942. So I don't, I don't think people were talking about the movie the same way back then that they talk about it now that yeah. I, I would, I, I have to say that quiet, please murder was one of those films that I booked for Noir city without having seen it. Oh, I just, I just knew that I wanted to show it was, it came about because I was doing a, a festival of a and B movies mm -hmm. chronologically in order from like the beginning of the noir era through the end of the forties. So it was an A picture and a B picture. And so when we got, I, so I, obviously I showed this on a double bill with this gun for hire. They were both 1942 movies, this gun for hire being the A picture and quiet, please murder being the B picture and the B picture won the evening uh, because the audience just went nuts for this film. So I, I have, real hopes that I can somehow pull this out of the vault at 20th Century Fox. I When I showed that the first time, Disney was not yet, had not yet taken possession of the 20th Century Fox library. And it was much, much easier to get films out of them. My old pal, Sean Belston was still doing all that work and but now it's it's difficult, and it's, I think it'll be especially difficult to try and get that on TCM. But we'll see. I, I never never give up, you know. Never yeah, and it, I was I was there when we screened it, and that was really fun because one, the film was just fun too. But it was really that was a great movie to see with the crowd. Absolutely, and and good because uh, it's so unknown that the print was excellent. Yeah, the print was in great shape. That's what we love is the, when you find those movies that are so rare that the the prints are still pristine so that the film doesn't have to be restored. 
Yeah. There, you know, it, it's never been shown really. <laughs> That's that pretty great. Back again, eh? You're sure in love with that little book, aren't you? Richard Burbage, the first actor to play Hamlet. The only known copy. I dream about it. A lot of book collectors do. And between you and I, some of them would knife their own mothers just to get their hands on that book. <laughs> so would I. Just to own it? No, I'd make a dozen, perhaps two dozen copies. Perfect imitations. They could be sold as this original. Stolen goods. No questions asked. Plenty of suckers to buy a good forgery. Well, that's been done before, too. Mind if I take it home with me? Over my dead body. I said to myself, Rebescu, of all your clients, who would most love to see this great treasure? That is why I telephoned to you, Mr. Cleaver. You've told me that half a dozen times already. How much longer are you boys going to be? Oh, just a second. I'm not so sure of this. Oh, excuse, please. It's excellent property and most safe. The police look for it six months now, but get nowhere. I know. Do you mind if I show this to someone who knows rare books? But yes, please do. I thought you were going to take me dancing. This is what I was telling you about. I've seen it twice already. It looks like a good buy. Rebescu showed it to me the other day. Now, books are not in my line. What do you think of it? It's genuine, all right. Good. That's all I need to know. Miss Blandy, the most best expert of old books. <laughs> what does she say? You might have told me you already had her opinion. I am most careful. I'll take it. You make the wise decision. Impossible to lose money in this book. It's like money in the bank. Check, all right? Oh, but I am so sorry. The person I act for, they must have cash. It is the term of the deal. You agree, you say yes, you pay cash if you buy it. All right, you Romanian bandit. I <laughs> came prepared. Oh, thank you. It's all there. Stolen goods? Aren't you taking quite a risk? No. Your opinion on this Hamlet eliminates all that. I'm stealing it at $20,000. <laughs> Send her in. 
darling, I couldn't wait until morning. Mara, this is a nice surprise. Oh, I made a good sale. It was so easy. You could resist your salesmanship. It worked beautifully. He simply had to have it stolen or not. And what did I tell you? Just show the customers one and they think it's the original. We'll gross more than the originals were. <laughs> they did it with a stolen Mona Lisa, sold dozens. Only five grand. I'm asking 20. Well, this man wouldn't go over 7,500. 1,000 for a best cue, 1,500 for me, leaves five for you. Myra, you wouldn't shortchange me, would you? Sure, if I were looking for trouble. Isn't that your favorite occupation? Eight copies in six months isn't bad. Chicago can use another, and Detroit wants two more. Well, by the way, who'd you collect this from? Martin Cleaver. Are you crazy? I told you to avoid him. But darling, I still don't know why. He's dangerous. All of our customers could be dangerous, but as long as the cash is okay, why worry? What have you got against Cleaver? I never met him, but I don't want to do business with him. Cancel the deal. Don't be ridiculous. You seem worried. What is it? Give him his money back, and here I'll have to do as I say. Stick to larceny-minded American suckers. He looked like one to me. He isn't. He's spending German money. Some of the loot the Nazi crowd smuggled out of occupied Europe. Uh-huh. So they can live like exiled kings if and when they escape after the war. Cleaver's buying for Goering or Himmler, investing in works of art. Literary rarities like diamonds are supposed to be safe in the event of post-war inflation. Well, he's stuck this time. I'm sorry I didn't get him for more. You're giving him his money back. I am not. You asked for that. And get rid of the idea that you're running this show. I can always find another outlet for my stuff. And that's what you think. You know what the Gestapo is. If you do, you will take my advice and settle with Mr. Cleaver. That man's a sadist. There's not an ounce of mercy in him. You two boys should get along. You always say you enjoy being hurt. Yes. A very clever imitation. Beautifully aged paper. An offset printing process retouched by hand. The work of an artist. But I do not like to be fooled. Mr. Cleaver, Mr. Cleaver, how can you say such thing? I am a respectable art dealer. Then I return your work of art. I want my money back. You get me into this trouble. Believe me, Mr. Cleaver, I only act as agent for this woman. She says it's genuine and I believe it. She pays commission. So I suspected. Where did you get this Hamlet? A man named Flegg? Forger of rare books. It looks like his work. I saw samples of it in Europe. I am a respectable man. I do not swindle people. And the man I represent does not like to be swindled. Who? Field Marshal Gehring? My client prefers to remain nameless. And I repeat, he will not submit to being swindled. You knew you were buying stolen property. But not a forgery. Your other customers may not complain, but I do. Oh, this is terrible. My reputation. If you think you're being swindled, why don't you call the police? Oh, I won't need their help. I'm sorry you feel this way. I can't make good the money. Then produce Mr. Flagg. I'll deal directly with him. He's a very difficult man to reach. I suggest you find a way, quickly. Now, as for you, Robescu. No, no! <laughs> Your Mr. Flegg probably doesn't know about the Hamlet deal. It was your own idea, wasn't it? And you pocketed the money behind his back. He did it deliberately? Then you must bring him to me. But he'd never... You can find some way. You needn't bother to tell the police about what happened here. It won't stop us. I don't work alone. I shall expect to hear from you within the hour. Plenty of time to locate Flag. Good day, Miss Piney. Possum. Follow her. I think she's safe. She'd do anything to save her own skin. Uh... Report to me at the usual place. Uh... Why 
wants you. He's been waiting for an hour. I don't know him. Doesn't look like ready cash. Tell him no, I haven't time now. You'd better make time, sister. The name is Myra Blandy. Don't be in such a hurry. I'll handle this. What is it, Mr. Uh, Mr. McBurn? Well, I expected something ten years older and fat. Come back in ten years. No party name of uh, William Shakespeare? Not personally. I wasn't around in 1600, but I sell books of his. So I hear. Just what are you driving at? The Burbage edition of Hamlet. It was snatched from the local library six months and nine days ago. And a guard was killed. Yes, I read all about that. And I understand you know where it can be picked up cheap. You're misinformed and you're insulting. I don't deal with thieves. You'll find the door over there. And I also hear very confidentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, that imitations of this Hamlet are being passed off at fat prices. You're wrong. Good day. Look, I want a little cooperation, sister. Edgar T. Collins shot me down here from New York. About a Hamlet he bought. He doesn't like it. I've never sold Mr. Collins any books. No, he bought it from a fellow named Sims in Baltimore. I don't see how that concerns me. Do you want a blueprint? I traced it to you. Oh, you're a detective. Hmm, private man. Well, I'm afraid you've been seriously misinformed. I've never dealt with any Mr. Sims in Baltimore. Look, beautiful. You're on the well-known spot, so pull your ears in. Collins doesn't want his money back. He wants blood. He's a nut on book collecting and wants everything kept on the up and up. He didn't buy your Hamlet of stolen goods either, so his skirts are clean. He isn't afraid to make a complaint. Now, this is all between you and me. But if I drop a hint in the DA's ear, Well, a smart lawyer might beat the rap for you, but would you still be in business after all the publicity? I don't know what you're talking about. Can't we play ball? You're not in this alone. You handle the hot stuff for somebody. Who is it? He'd kill me. Who? Flag? Yeah, that's one the cops don't know. Yet. This uh, Shakespeare stuff, I'm told it's Flag's product. He's good from way back. Where do I reach him? I don't know. Come on, let's have it. There are reasons why I have to handle the stuff he sends me. The Hamlet isn't my only headache. I'm really afraid. Blackmail? The right man could steer you out of that. Do you mean it? Well, of course, I'm in business myself, but uh, the fee wouldn't be too high. Oh, I'd pay anything. Now, you help me build a case against Flagg, and I'll see that your skirts are kept clean. Deal? Deal. When do I meet him? Well, you better let me arrange it. I never know when he'll phone. I can't talk very well here. Where are you staying? The Bradley House. Pick me up for dinner. All right, about seven. Swell. Oh, by the way, aren't we forgetting something very important? What? My retainer. Nice work if you can get it. Playing both sides. No, oh, Flag's the other side. You see, Collins hires me and you pay off to be kept out of the case. Oh, I see. How much? Oh, uh, how about 500? How about 250? All right. On account. <laughs> you know, I like a businesswoman who knows her business. 500 would have bought you a better dinner. <laughs> Thanks. Every instinct tells me I'm a fool, but... I'm trusting you because I want to. You needn't worry. I lied to you because I was afraid. You still afraid? Not so much. See you at seven. And uh, bring that smile along. <laughs> Mr. Cleaver, Myra Blandy. I spoke to Flagg. He won't meet you. He absolutely refuses. Of course I want to cooperate. I have a suggestion. Leave a book in my name at the information desk at the public library on K Street tonight. I'll have Flagg pick it up. That'll identify him when he asks for it. Oh, by the way, he uses the name of McBurn. Hal McBurn. He mustn't know about me. Yes, tonight at 8.30. Goodbye. Hello, Lady Dracula, and how are you this pleasant afternoon? Some tea? No, thank you. We're in the mood, aren't we? How many butterflies did you torture since lunch, hoping one would turn on you? Something tells me our little Myra harbors a secret. How do things go today? Nothing very exciting. Boston wired for some more of your penmanship. The Dickens autograph. See anybody amusing? 
Not a soul. Are you sure? Positive. I hear that Hal McBurn is quite the ladies' man. Oh, yes, I was going to tell you about him. Yes, my little liar, after I dragged it out of you. Who told you? The book world isn't very big. He was followed to your place. And if you weren't so stupid disobeying orders, he wouldn't be bothering you. Don't fret. I can handle McBurn. There's only one way to handle his kind. I'll handle it my way. Wait a minute. Have you fallen for this cop? Jim! Another woman would have walked out of me for that, but you stay. Why? Because I'm a punishment in your life. Your conscience demands it. Oh, don't give me the old chestnut about our expecting punishment because we were taught to as kids. But we do. Your everlasting lying, your flirting with danger, is a secret desire to be caught off guard and hurt. Listen to Dr. Freud. Why do you think there's so many automobile accidents? Mere carelessness? No. The unconscious impulse to punish ourselves is sometimes so great it becomes self-destructive. When we should be alert and on guard, our enemy, conscience, super-ego, betrays us to psychic justice. A healthy body plays sick, or we fear insanity, or we show poor judgment in a crisis and make a mistake that destroys us. And what did all this wisdom ever buy, our amateur psychoanalyst? You. You may be my automobile accident. You're dangerous to my interests, and it excites me to play with my own life. The way we live is a constant threat to our security, but we love it giving and taking pain, the torturing fear of destruction. Psychiatrists say there's a little of it in most people, but it has run away with us. So that when I make a mistake, it's my conscience punishing me? Precisely. You may be crazy, but I'm not. The funny part about it is that no court or sanity commission would ever call us crazy, but we're really a couple of walking horror stories. Speak for yourself, darling. Ah. The lady who never makes a mistake. All right. When do I get at McBurn? I said I'd handle him. And bungle the job? When are you seeing him? For dinner. Then he has an appointment at the public library, and after that... Public library? They've got some books I want. Some rather priceless books. I've been working on a new setup to get at them. McBurn. I can use him. Two birds with one stone. Please, Jim, let me take care of McBurn. Why? Is there something else? Somebody you haven't told me about? No. And it's my job. You want to be an eyewitness? No? I'm surprised. All right. Deliver the cop to the library and then go home. You're quite a girl, Myra. Freud, Lombroso, Havelock Ellis, they all had your number. Who was it wrote women seek intense and terrifying emotion because they really enjoy it? It's as necessary to their comfort as water to a fish, as natural as breathing. Can I fix you something, darling? What do you have in mind? Poison? Best dinner I ever had. Must have been the company. Funny coincidence, I liked it too. I knew we'd get along the minute I laid eyes on you. <laughs> Let me know if I get fresh. I promise. Are you so good to all your clients? Service? That's the McBurn trademark. <laughs> oh, driver, will you please stop a minute at the public library on K Street? Okay. You know, I feel even better than I did a second ago. No gun. Had a case last month where a party packed a Derringer. Did she appreciate your service? Well, I don't know. She was 64. <laughs> when are we going to talk about flag? You've been too busy telling me about the life and times of Mr. Hal McBurn. Well, I was trying to get up nerve enough to talk about you. Be original, don't say it. Hmm? What? Did anyone ever tell you about your eyes? <laughs> I like yours. <laughs> Even if I wouldn't trust them, open or shut. Oh, you wouldn't. They promise trouble. I like trouble. <laughs> well, be careful, this is a new hat. Oh, what a crack to make at a time like this. Do I worry about my $10 bonnet? I hope you're on the level with me. Of course I am. What made you say that? Well, I was getting lonesome on this case. No more. I hate to disturb you, sister, but if it's books you want, this is the joint. You live here? I have to pick up a book. Ask for it at the information desk. It's in my name. Now, why do you want a book when I'm around? Hurry up.
gratifying emotion because they really enjoy it. Do you want to be an eyewitness? Closing time, 15 minutes. Closing time, 15 minutes. Sorry, I thought you were someone else. Well, lucky Tommy. Closing time, 15 minutes. Closing time, 15 minutes. Say, uh, where's the information desk? Why, it's always been right here. Oh, good. Uh, have you got a book? I like a good murder mystery. Plenty of blood. Fiction room, second floor. Thanks. Say, if there's a call for me, you know where I am. Lieutenant Creighton, homicide squad. Better hurry, mister. Closing time. Is that the way the cops in this town keep in trim? Reading books? A book never hurt anybody. Have you got one for Blandy? Myra Blandy. Is that your name? Do I look like her? <sighs> Blandy, I'll see. Been in this racket long? About a year. Like it? Most of the time. Gee, how do you stand to quiet in here? Well, I'm hardened to it. You, know, you ought to be in pictures, beautiful. And I'm not kidding. Here's your book. Oh, thanks. Say, um, uh, do you suppose... Oh, excuse that... me. Mr. McBurn? Yeah. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Oh, who are you? I have information regarding certain literary forgeries. I'll listen. Let's go in here, shall we? I thought we could be alone here for a minute. Uh, what's on my mind? They all go to a bomb-proof bank vault tomorrow. Air raid protection. Well, I'd be glad. Did I tell you the New York Library buried $15 million worth of books for the duration? Yes. I've been petrified since we've lost Hamlet. This little handful. $150,000. I'm petrified myself. That'd make quite a haul. Perhaps you've got your eye on them, Mr. Flay. McBurn's the name. I'm afraid I must disagree. What were you going to tell me about forgeries? Let's have it quick. That money must be returned. Oh, just like that? Just like that. The consequences will be serious if you decide otherwise. Sue me. I don't know what you're talking about. You're a fake Hamlet, Mr. Flagg. I'm not Flagg. You're pig-headed as a German. Those who swindle my leaders don't get away with it. <laughs> so you are a heine. For the last time, are you going to make good our losses? Sorry, I can't go for the $64 question. I've got a date. Huh. One of your stormtroopers? I missed the first two reels. I don't get it. Gentlemen, we're closing now. It's almost 9 o'clock. Oh, thank you. We're just leaving. Take him out the back way. We know how to make you cooperate, Mr. Flagg. You must use the other door, gentlemen. Air raid precaution, locking this one. It's closing time, sir. McBurn? Oh, nice of you to drop in. What do you want? I was told to give this to McBurn. I'll take it. Thanks. Wait for me here. Hey, take me too. I don't like him.
I'm sorry, but you can't go up there now. We're closed. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, I'll come back in the morning. You can spend the whole day up there, but not now. Uh, I'll have to turn out all the lights when I come back. How does it feel to work for Adolf? Think you're Superman? I'm in a hurry, please. I want to cook a wolf. You're going to have him. Oh, no. It's the name of a cookbook. It's the cook of the wolf, for how to cook of the wolf. If I know the name of what the fuck I got to ask of you. Try the reading room. Oh, I wish I get the round, the runs, the run around, to go here or go there. You'd think I was a taxpayer. You can't do business with Hitler. Only a crook or a fool would want to. There is something we can do with him. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I told him a military secret and he fainted. Poor kid. Somebody fell. I'm Craven. Homicide. Dead? Mm-hmm. Somebody shoved a knife in his stomach. Don't let anybody leave the building. Lock the doors. You're all material witnesses. Please remain at the other end of the room. Another guy? You got me. Can I be of help? My name's Mick Byrne, private man, New York Agency. Sorry, lady, you've got to stay in here. Yes, I can use you. What's headquarters number? Uh, I'll call them. Outside line. See who it is. Isn't that the coroner's job? Do as I ask. Hello, Inspector Henderson. Craven speaking. K Street, Public Library, 95, Man Knives. Yeah. Send the boys over. Yes, sir, we're ready at this end. We'll stage the best murder investigation you ever saw. Yeah, Doc Dale is here. And still sober, too. Uh, the coroner's entitled to one little drink, isn't he? Yes, sir. Be there in five minutes. Okay, step on it. Get anything? His papers say his name's Martin Cleaver. Cleaver? You know him? Odd name. Seems to be in the art business. First the Hamlet Quarto, now this. It's getting to be a habit. And I suppose we may expect the same results from the police. Nothing. You can expect what you like. Who are you? I'm Edmund Walpole, head of the reference room. Our $10,000 reward for the recovery of the Hamlet seems to be no incentive to you people. Oh, 10 Gs, huh? I'm your man. But why don't you do something? The murderer may still be among us. Keep your pants on. I've got to wait for my technicians to arrive. Don't let anybody touch the body. Who would want to? Anybody leave? Not since he did the dive. Good. And our man's still in here. Have you been here long, madam? No. Did you come directly to this chair? No. Uh, first, I went over to the... Show me. You knew he was meeting Cleaver. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I'm as surprised as you are. You did this to me deliberately. I thought you found danger exciting. From you, not from them. My men are coming. I've got to go through with this masquerade. Good luck. Not here. The neighbors might complain. Oh, careful. Lying to me now may be your conscience. That one careless move. I never make any. All right, one we'll go into that later. Here comes my coroner. Murdered in the library. What was he reading? Oh, you snappy. Where's Joe? You know what to do, Joe. Get everybody's story. Where he was and what he saw. We've got to get the books and get out quick. Nail McBurn, first chance you get. He's still with us. Uh-oh. Which one? Over there. What kept you so long? Some nut mistook me for Flake. Was he going to be here tonight? I wouldn't know. Don't you believe me? Sure, beautiful. Why shouldn't I? You didn't tell the police I know Flake. Now just keep your mouth shut and let me handle this. You hired me and you're going to get service. Did you ever have a funny feeling you walked right into something? Mine says there's a bullet looking for me. 
Keep your eyes open. I need a pal. Knife, pointed scissors, spike, something like that, did it? Did you turn up anything? Yes, I did. And Miss Oval. Yes, that's the man. Please, may I go now? You stay at your desk. You and a man named uh, Benson went into the manuscript room with Cleaver. Uh-huh. Said he wanted to talk to me, and uh, then he was called away. Why did you sock Benson? Oh, but I didn't, Lieutenant. You took sick and fainted, didn't you? Then I remembered my first aid, and I was just going for a glass of water when Cleaver sailed over the balcony. I wasn't with them. You're lying, both of you. Am I? All right, don't talk. I'll take the pair of you down to headquarters. Vance, get his gun. Two, eh? Carrying one for a friend? Say, Lieutenant, there was a cleaver in the book racket. We ought to check the rare stuff. That's a good idea. A Walpole. Where'd you keep it? Our valuable books. They're safe in the manuscript vault. Let's take a look. Outside line. Huh? Why not? Police orders. Lieutenant Craven says no outgoing calls. Okay. Have a horn on that thing. Lord Byron's Don Juan, mint copy. They're all still here. It would be impossible for a thief to open this safe. Whose handwriting is this? Byron's. His own corrections. I guess that makes it worth plenty. Looks like the original Solander. It is. What's a Solander? A slipcover to keep the book clean. You know books, Mr. Craven. Yes, I'm a great reader. Anything I can lay my hands on. Memory like an elephant. Listen, if Cleaver and his mob are after these and the killer's still in the building, these books go under police protection right now. We'll lock them up at headquarters. All right. Perhaps the police ought to take the Thomas Jefferson manuscript, too. It's a priceless historical document. Oh, yes, by all means. Anything you say? It's over here. I bet you've got a theory all your own, Mr. Byrne. Maybe. I agree with Mr. Craven. You're not telling everything you know. Maybe. Have you any clippings on the theft of the Hamlet Quarter? Yes. I'd like to look them over. I'll get them for you. Jefferson was president when he wrote this article on curing ham. A very interesting piece of Americana. Ought to bring a good price in the open market. Thomas Jefferson. Yes, a very good price. It's a collector's item, all right. You're making a very wise move of putting it in a safe place along with the exhibition books. We'd hate to lose those five little books, wouldn't we? You'll have to sign for it, Lieutenant. Oh, gladly. I'll get the five books. Sign here, please. We always have to have a receipt for any books taken off the shelves. Didn't know I could get $150,000 so easily. Lieutenant Craven. Lieutenant Craven. They're gone. And they were right on this desk a minute ago. You were here. Want to search me? I saw no one else come in. Well, there was a stack boy collecting books. He could have picked them up by mistake. That's right. He was pushing baby carriage 103 or 130. Let's go find him. Need any help, Lieutenant? Not from you. Truck 103 tells his station. It's on the third tier. We're on the fifth now. Why do you want these? Ever have a hunch? What's going on now is tied up with that Hamlet job. I need an angle. You think whoever killed that guard? He's in the building again? Maybe. Where is station 126 in the stacks? 126? On this floor. Show me. Say, you've got a couple of books in here. Two miles of books. Suppose uh, we might get lost? You might. Lead the way. Well, it's just like the big house. Every book's got a number. The Dewey Decimal System. We classify our books by numbers instead of titles. Very tricky. For instance, a book on agriculture is in the 630 group. And then, say, books on fruits, orchards, and vineyards are classified as 634. Mm. There are ten major classifications. Philosophy is 100, religion 200, literature is 800, history 900. It's old, the little lady in the red hat. Then each volume has an author's number. You ever try using all that concentration on something that wears pants and smokes a cigar? <laughs> uh-huh. We're getting married when the army's through with him. Yeah? What's he like? You. That's why I mistook you for him when you came in tonight. Oh, he's an ape. Not here. You know, I wish I'd met you before noon today. Why? I wouldn't have already fallen for somebody else. <laughs> you couldn't compete with my army man. I've never been arrested for trying. This is station 126. What are you looking for? The book I wanted. Do the mice take the books around here? We don't have mice. Well, maybe the stack boy took it. Well, that's easy to find out. Freddy! Oh, Freddy! 
He might be downstairs. Well, get him. You sound just like a husband. Well, skip the compliments. That you, Kay? Who's there? Mac. Mac, where are you? Myra, what are you wandering around in here for? Looking for you, darling. I have to tell you something. Well, go ahead. Craven, he's Flegg. Yeah. You knew too much about rare books for an ordinary copper. I was afraid to tell you before, but I want to play square with you. You knew he was pulling this job tonight? No, I swear I didn't. I've got to watch my step. He's got a lot of innocent people sewed up. Somebody might stop a slug if they get wise. Well, don't let on you know. Now's your chance to get him. Mac, you do believe me. I want to, beautiful. Mr. McFern. Get back outside and thanks. Up here. Do you want me, sir? Miss Ryan had to go with old Walpole. Did you take any books off this truck? Oh, no, sir. The morning shift puts them away. Oh, I see. Gee, my girl's waiting for me in a drugstore and she'll get sore. Why can't I call her and tell her I'm stuck here? You know, that cop on the switchboard says no outgoing calls, a police rule or something. I know, we're bottled up. Just roll with the punches and you'll recover. Who's down there? Who wants to know? Craven. Is that you, McBurn? Yeah? I want to see you. Lieutenant Craven. Don't you fool. You said he's got the books. Wake him up. Make him talk, but don't finish him until you get those books. I'll wait for you outside. Could I get anyone a drink of water? You've got to stay here. The police don't want you to leave your places. Where's the woman who was in this chair? Where is she? She crossed us up. You know what to do. Go find her. Quit stalling. We know you got him. Don't lie. Where'd you put him? in there. Smoke a cigarette? Go ahead, but keep your hands high. Eric Parson, working a shipyard, huh? Yeah, save your money, too. Parson sounds foreign. You German? No. I don't blame you. Where'd you get this? Under this table? Down in the library. Who dropped it? All right, get downstairs where you belong. I got something cooking on the stove. 
know. You've always got something cooking. They won't even let me call my husband. And when he doesn't hear from me, he gets the craziest ideas. The cop says they haven't got the killer yet. Go back to your chair. Say, I'm so scared I've got to get something to read. Well, help yourself. I must get my mind off this murder. I'm going to have a baby. Oh, wait till you get home. I mean my wife. Those cops ought to be shot. This is awful. i got a date. Yeah, I've given my boyfriend every alibi except murder. Dark rooms, too. Just to get out of Flegg's way. What are you doing? Getting the police while I'm still alive. He has men out there. They'll shoot if they see you. I got to risk it before there's any more killing in here. Hollis, Flegg's bodyguard. I've met him. He thinks I have the books. And somebody stuck Martin Cleaver with one of Flegg's forgeries. A Hamlet, maybe. Was it you? Well, Flegg has lots of other outlets. Has he? I figure it like this. After Cleaver put the screws on, you ran into me. I was yelling Hamlet, too. Cleaver used a gun. I used a jailhouse. You were on a spot. I know what you're thinking, Mac, and you're wrong. Am I? You played me off against Cleaver. You told him the guy who'd come to pick up a book could be Flegg. You knew he'd have his way or kill. No. Somewhere along the line, you also told Flegg that I was Mr. Trouble. He said he'd take care of me, right? Mac, you're so wrong. Beautiful. You wouldn't be you if you weren't lying. You knew I'd walk in here tonight with two men laying for me. Flegg sent a note, using your name, to get me up on that balcony. I didn't write this. I wasn't even on the balcony. Part of Flegg's plan to take over the library. He needed a body to stage a fake police investigation, and I was elected. And you knew it. No, Mac. Anyway, Cleaver went instead and got stuck with Hollis Knife. And all the time, you were my pal. I never believed much in things happening at first sight. But it did, Mac. That's why I was afraid. That's why I wanted to be rid of you. I've always had my own way with the man. I wanted to. But this time it's different. You won't believe that. But it's true. I can try. You kind of took a shot at me before. I had no hard feelings. Because you're what I like. You can trust me. Well, I don't expect you to play straight. I just want you to be around and in the clear when this is all over. We can have some fun. This wasn't in your bag before. I didn't want to forget an appointment I had at 9.30 at a bookstore on 31st Street. What a client. Makes notes in the middle of murder. I'll be back for you, beautiful, with a riot squad. Mr. McBurn? Yes? I've been looking everywhere for you. Something awful's happening. What? Those policemen, they're fake. I heard them talking. They stole the books. Well, not exactly. I'm going for help. Say nothing and you'll be all right till I get back. I'm terrified. Well, Myra, keep an eye on the kid. There's a guy in the army writing letters to her. It's got to do our bit. Well, this side looks clear. Careful, they have a man out there. I feel so helpless. They're murderers. We'd better go back to the others. They'll be suspicious. Where is he? I don't know. Not far. You were with him? Where'd he go? He didn't tell me. You have fallen for him. Don't be silly. I delivered him to you, didn't I? There's no hate without love. You hate because you dread love and the fear of desiring it. Save it. He's been out for an airing. I wouldn't try that again, mister. Said he went out to get the right time. Come on. Oh, I've been here before. As you guessed? About me? 
And that little librarian, maybe she knows too. That's all I want to know. You might have stopped a slug. I don't want anybody else to try that. You're all in temporary police custody. Take him in here. Breaking out of here wasn't a very wise move, McBurn. I got lonesome. Say, don't you think it's time Mr. Cleaver went to the icebox? I'm running this show. Show is the word. We have reason to believe that you know where the missing books are. Wish I had. I can take you downtown and sweat it out of you. Now, if you really mean headquarters, Lieutenant, I'd love that. Oh, Miss Ryan. Would you please come here? I'd like a book from the stacks. Certainly. Kiss Cadden's collector's guide. I understand it carries a description of the missing books. I'll get it for you right away. Hollis. Yeah? The girl. Right. Let her alone, Flag. Flag? So you've been playing cat and mouse with me, eh? I thought I was the cat. I've underestimated your abilities. Call your man off. That girl can't hurt you. No, but you can spoil my setup since she knows things that you know. Now, we were talking about some stolen books. If I had them, I'd give them to you. What? Blue signal? Hello? Somebody said blue signal and hung up. That's the signal for an air raid alert. We must stand by for the sirens. This is a fine time to have a blackout. There they go. Everybody must go to the shelter in the basement. We're blacking out. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. Mr. Craven, I am the air raid warden for this building. I have my orders. Miss Ovo, air raid. Miss Hartwig, can you hear the sirens? Take everybody to the shelter. Now, please walk. Don't run. Don't get excited. Uh, this way, please. This way. Don't be nervous. Our shelter is bomb-proof. Everything's under control. Don't get excited. Take it easy, folks. Watch your step on the stairs. Uh, take it easy, sir. Keep calm. Let's get out of here. After I get what I'm after, McGurn knows where those books are. We can take him with us. Now, oh, wait. But I tell you, it's too risky. That's what I say. Make him talk, then come back. All right, let's go.
dirty tricks. Hey. Hey. Take it easy. Have you down, Mac? I can walk. You sure? Where can we hide? Well, someplace where I can show a light in this blackout. The window. No, Flag would be up here for us. Can we get up on the roof? Yes. Let's go. Careless of you, McBurn, breaking doors. Don't you read the sign, quiet, please? Get over there, Myra. What's she doing in this? Like Miss Ryan, she knows more than is good for her. He's worried about you, Myra. That's a good sign. This way, please. I don't know how long this blackout inconvenience will last, but I've arranged for a quiet, persuasive talk. who betrayed my identity. You did. Sounding off on old books. I'm glad it wasn't an old friend. Been out of business. You have something that I want. I haven't got the books. None of that, please. I've gone to great trouble to acquire them tonight. Look, Fang. Let the women go. This is between you and me. Wouldn't you play good cards if you had them? Oh, your racket isn't new. But of all the crazy stunts, trying to put the slug on me in the air when you could do it on some dark, quiet street. Two birds with one stone. Well, when you killed the wrong man, why didn't you finish what you started on me? Because of the emotional suspense, the anticipation of whether you'd catch me or not. You see, I belong to a strange breed. We find pleasure in fear and pain. You like to be hurt? It's a form of self-punishment. Oh, well, I'll do all I can for you. I'm sorry, but the game is over. I intend to get what I want. Cleaver went in for books. Why don't you ask his man, Benson? Thank you, I did. But it was a waste of time. To die in terror. But he didn't appreciate it. Come on now, quit stalling. Suppose you find out where the books are after. I take the women out of the building. Forgive me, but I wouldn't trust you that far. Since you insist upon being so stubborn, I shall have to do things my way. Oh, you mustn't show a light. It's definitely against the rules. I know, but the window's covered. Oh, yes. Well, don't put on any more lights. Oh, Mr. Walpole. Yes, my dear? Never mind. Tell him later. It's a perfect blackout. Not a light showing anywhere. Everybody's doing his bit. Harp string around a finger can give excruciating pain. A crippled finger isn't very beautiful, you know. But, Burn, I'm uh, curious to know if you like to watch pain. Let her alone, Flegg. Mac, don't let him do it. All right, you can have the books. Where are they? I've got to use the phone. You couldn't have got them out of the building. I mean the inner office phone. They'll only be given up on my say-so. Well, who's got them? It's got to be handled my way. All right, go ahead. I want the information desk, please. Sorry, pal, you gotta get an okay. Okay. Let him have it, Joe. Mr. Walpole there? Just a second. Mr. Walpole, telephone. Oh, thank you. Walpole speaking. All clear. What? Oh, the all clear signal. Very good. Have the books ready for me when I come down. Don't let anyone else have them. Well, what are you waiting for? You have the all clear. That didn't sound like my senior warden's voice. You've got to be careful. Fifth columnists try to spoil blackouts. Well, somebody else could have phoned for your warden. Yes. Walpole. So he's in it with you. 
Let's go down there. Perhaps I ought to call him back just to make sure. I don't know how many signals you want, but I can't stand this darkness. What a murderer, Luz! I want light! Miss Oval! Miss Oval! You're disobeying my orders! Get those lights out! What's going on here? They won't get those lights out! Come on! My men just got back from searching Flegg's apartment. This the original? We found it on Flegg's workbench, along with a lot of other stuff. It is, Inspector, it is. Well, why didn't sell it? Why sell fine books when the suckers will pay for imitations? Besides, I'm a collector myself. But I was careless, wasn't I? And I was lucky. For one brief moment, I left myself unguarded. The subconscious mind exacting its punishment. He likes to hurt himself. I always knew this would happen. But when and how... I'd wake up nights in a cold sweat, thinking I'd been caught. You see, like a lot of criminals, I... I wanted to be caught. That's what a conscience does to us. Though we don't always know it. We can outwit other people, but never ourselves. I seem to have outsmarted myself in this job. I get all the slapping around, but the reward has to be split 12 ways. Please help recover the hamlet. They're entitled to a cut. I never argue with the law. Mr. Flake, won't you please tell us what you've done with those five books? I've tried to. I haven't got them. I hate to sound mercenary, but uh, will the library offer a reward? I suppose so, yes. About five grand? Oh, you know where they are. No, but I'd hate to go to a lot of trouble just for the exercise. We'll pay $5,000. 2500 You tempt me. Yes, definitely. Oh, uh, by the way, look for some leads in Cleaver's papers. He didn't work alone. Hope you enjoy the hanging. You wouldn't understand. To die in terror. Listen, I've given my statement. I gotta go. It's my job. I'm on the morning shift. All right, but what's the name? Helen Murphy. Okay, Helen. Eric Parson. You must stop being frightened. It's all over now. I want to talk to you. Excuse me, please. Did Flegg talk about me? Not a word. Oh, you didn't let him. Thank you, Mac. When I protect a client, I protect him. You're in the clear. Just as you promised. Cigarette? No, thank you. Something's wrong. What is it? Where are those five books you lifted off that stack wagon? Don't give me that. You got them and you let Flag gun for me, thinking I had them. You're out of your mind. Stop acting. You tried to play me off against Flag. Why not? I was a lucky guy. I might knock off Flegg. That'd make you top man in the racket. A swell setup. And you're made of ice. And a retainer. I kept my end of the bargain. You're not in the Flegg case so far, but from right now, you're on your own. You've got to listen to me. Where are those books? I don't know. Nine twenty. Darwin's biography of African chieftains. All books are classified according to number. History is nine hundred. Here's nine thirty. Nonsense history of Rome. C thirty one. The letter C maybe. I explained that memo. C thirty one. Yeah, Charleston's Ancient Tales of the Nile Delta. You sure had a date in the morning with a hundred and fifty grand. 
going to blame a girl for trying. I'd have told you. In a pig's eye. Look, beautiful, nothing ties you to the killings tonight. No proof. But I'm going to nail you for the Hamlet forgery. Revenge? No, to teach you a lesson. You had me going for a while. But a man doesn't mean a thing to you. You live for little Myra and nobody else. And you'll always be that way. Mac. What you said was true until you came along. Oh, don't hand me that one. Any dame who worries about her hat in a taxi. That was the tip-off to me. But I didn't want to believe it. Mac, I love you. It's the first time I've ever been able to say that to any man. Oh, lay off. You've yelled wolf too many times. I wanted to give you a break. But you tried to destroy Kay, that innocent kid. You were the only one who knew she'd spotted Flag, And you tried to tip him off about it. I couldn't help it. I was jealous. You? No. You wanted to convince Flagg you were on his side, and that was your big mistake, sister. You were falling for her. No, she doesn't mean a thing to me, only what she stands for. She's waiting for some guy in the army. Yeah, but you wouldn't get it. There are thousands like Kay, and a lot of guys in the army counting on him, daydreaming about things after the war. Her useless death would have hurt him. Yeah, maybe I am a sentimental slob, but I don't buy that. Thanks for the buggy ride. Oh, so you know where they were all the time, eh? Nope. I found this on Flag and figured it out all by myself. And don't horn in on the reward. Is that so? Yeah. Mac, you have to see me home. Oh, no. You're the only one I can count on. Cleaver's men are out there and they know what happened. They'll kill me. Well, maybe they will, maybe they won't. People who do business with Hitler's mob know the payoff. Go ask the cops to take you home. Oh, Mac, don't desert me now. I'm sick of your lying. I'm not lying, I tell you. I'm terrified. Yeah, you're like Flake. You love it. Good night, or I mean good morning. Exciting night, wasn't it? Mr. Walpole, would you mind seeing me home? I, I don't want to go out alone. Why, there's nothing to be afraid of now. flag has been taken to headquarters, and our streets are the safest in the country. Not around here, but there's a stand four blocks down. That dummy, which way'd he go? Headed east towards Main Street. What's up? It's one of Cleaver's gunmen. Just found it open to German's papers. Poison in it? No, oh, I'm sorry. I guess you're not all alike, but right now I'm not very good company. Sure. 
sister was involved somehow, wasn't she? You liked her, too. I feel like a guy who's lost his pet cat. Did you ever have a cat when you were a kid? Mama said they had to go. You know what it means to lose something you could do without, but had to have. Come on, I'll buy the coffee. 